From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. You know, much ado has been made about this whole metaverse. One of the biggest social media companies, the originator of the concept of social media, Facebook, changed their name to Meta. Got a lot of skin in the game, it would appear. Um, companies like Microsoft have thrown their hat in the ring. And there's a lot of chatter about this being you know, the next big thing, and there's reasons that that likely could be true. Uh, the question is how soon and what is it going to look like? Um, but uh, in our conversations about this in previous episodes, apparently we happened upon something that piqued a listener's interest. Uh, listener Chip wrote in and had this to say. Hello, I'm a regular listener to your show, stuff they don't want you to know, and recently in a few discussions about the metaverse, you have unknowingly or knowingly hit upon some interesting theories that have made me think of the possibilities of virtual time travel, with people having all their info and likes, dislikes, and regular daily happenings posted on Facebook or other social media, and in combination with Google Earth, is it possible that Facebook or Meta could be building a complete time relative model of the world, including the people and their personalities, according to Facebook routines and records? So years from now, or centuries from now even, um, it would be possible to virtually go back in time in the metaverse and see and perhaps even talk to your ancestors or your virtual younger self. Scary stuff, but also interesting to think that several hundred years from now, a future relative could step into a meta suit or helmet and virtually walk into the town I live in, see where I lived, where I worked, and perhaps even meet a virtual me and have a conversation. Thanks for getting me thinking. I love the show. Keep up the good work. Chip. Then he gave us permission to use his email and his name as we saw fit. I love this. Um, it makes me think of a very web 1.0 technology called the Wayback Machine um, or the Internet Archive. There was also something called, I think the Internet Graveyard was a thing for a while, but it essentially is a, a record of like a snapshot, sort of like, you know, you've got your time machine backup on your Mac if you're a Mac person. And you can theoretically go back to any point in time and recreate the way your hard drives and file structures existed at that exact point. Uh, and that's what the, the Wayback Machine theoretically allows you to do, to, to look at a website as it existed on a certain day, um, you know, in a certain year, in a certain minute, theoretically. And given what we know about the way the metaverse could operate, the idea that this is taking the web as we know it and making it fully four dimensional three three i mean i don't know like what, what is the fourth dimension smell uh three dimensional at the very least um explorable in much more of an immersive way at the very least and if you could capture this data in a similar way you could conceivably do something like this it, it really reminds me of an episode of black mirror i can't remember the name but it involves bringing back a loved one from the dead essentially using their uh, social media footprint um, and of course the, the inevitable black mirror moment of that episode the kind of twilight zone monkey's paw situation is that like it's not really that person it's just it, it's fed by how much that person fed the internet algorithm fed the social media algorithm and it happens that the character in the show was super active on social media so to chip's point some people that have a more robust footprint are going to have a more true to life recreation of themselves in this you know theoretical concept here um, but at the very least you could recreate the world i mean think about how all these google cars that, that roam around and, and take footage of your neighborhood are capturing a moment in time like if you've ever if you've ever tried to look at your address uh on google earth or google maps or whatever um you'll you'll see the moment that they uh they caught you and you'll be like oh that was when i had this lawn chair outside that i was painting that was that one day you know um, and so they're capturing that moment in time. But if you could like accelerate that 
or run them more frequently or you know deploy a larger um, you know fleet of these types of capture devices you could conceivably go back in time to some semblance of like a real depiction of a moment in time at the very least you know in terms of like the layout of a location and the way things look because we all know we've all been back to our hometowns after having not gone for a while and things change you know things that you remember from when you were a kid are no longer there they're replaced by Applebee's presumably um, and it's weird it can feel very like you're stepping into a dream or something and that's what this makes me think of you know like the idea of being able to kind of explore you know the past it's not really time travel per se it's just a recreation but if the more day, I mean, that's the thing too about the metaverse. It's all about the volume of data that can be captured in the highest fidelity possible, right? Like in, in all respects, in terms of um, pixels, in terms of audio, in terms of like literal data that feeds these algorithms. It's all about the volume and the ability to just like have a more robust recreation of whatever it is that you're experiencing, whether it's a website or, you know, uh, walking through a street. Um, and this is really fascinating, and I hadn't really thought of this, but it really is something that's very comparable to the Wayback Machine. I just wanted to chat about mm. this. I think it's really fascinating. Well, let me uh, let me weigh in. I, I've got thoughts on this one, of course, but uh, so I'm um, probably technically older than most uh, living humans. Uh, <laughs> so, Methuselah over here. So the the concept of social media goes back to the the old telephone game of oral folklore right the stories we tell are ultimately always stories about ourselves the human species is inevitably obsessed uh and has such a crush on itself this uh everything you described Noel, is i would say not only a fascinating thought experiment but also increasingly plausible however yeah. there are problems with this chip i i don't know if you've how far you've walked down this rabbit hole but i'd like to ping some things because i thought your letter was so awesome so first first off yes the idea of recreating someone or their personality is a huge deal and it is going to happen at some point it's one of the first things we talk about in our episode the f potential future paths of immortality the idea of a facsimile of something that has verisimilitude such that it can reliably answer the way that living person would have answered when they were organic that is a thing that is on the way um, and because even the most powerful wealthy people in the history of peopling are still just people it's going to be something they want to do uh, and then that will here's what's going to happen part of that leads into the idea of sentience right when will this will this copy of a person be able to go to court and say you know like um like well i'm not ted turner prime but i'm ted turner 1a god damn it I do and i do have control of tbs uh like is that like that legal case something like that can plausibly occur now and uh, it's something sci-fi writers have been thinking about for a long time but the the second thing and the thing that doesn't get reported a lot about this is the idea of okay yes we will create this amazing thing we will create that moment in black panther where t'challa is able to go speak with all of his elders throughout history oh, yeah. who have been black panther at some point would been the king of wakanda that that's a very very close um it's a very close accurate interpretation of what this situation you're talking about chip could look like however in this case since these things are created by private entities we must always ask the question what happens if they just decide to edit history they can do it now, right? You don't have to hunt down every physical book if you have a metaverse. You can just say Martin Luther King's comments uh, when correctly sanitized are all well and good, but we don't want him talking about class war. You mean like so, they do with history books? <laughs> they teach right, like they do with, yeah. exactly. But now it is 
now it is a book that has no like now in a in a metaverse in the kind of metaverse we're discovering in this thought experiment there's no need to inform people that history has been changed in a way that benefits you know folks important to those private industries and that is fucking dangerous well it's also the, a question of intent like is this all just for a lark is this all just for funsies to be able to oh i'm going to go back and talk to my great grandpapa steve you know that's cool and like quirky and like a neat thing to be able to do at what point does it transition from a lark to like the way history is recorded because that's i think what chip is getting at big picture is this the way history is remembered and, and re-experienced and, uh, and captured, you know? While it lasts. Uh, it's, <laughs> well, what lasts? History I, I, or the metaverse? Yeah, yeah, history. Uh, the ability to record history. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to be that pessimistic. Um, my point is, why would they face backwards? and record all that stuff and spend all the time and resources to create this model of the past for, for my money. And I think for Meta's money, they're more interested in the future. What may perhaps collecting that stuff in the past will help them figure out what each individual person or what major trends will occur in the future, which is essentially what they're doing right now. But, yes. but, like, but they can the sell it. Model. They can sell it, though, yes. as like a neat feature. And then people are on board because who wouldn't want to go back and talk to Grand Grandpapa Steve? And tell me more about myself, Grandpa Steve. You know what I mean? Like, I can't wait for you to talk about me to me. I'll pay for that. On There's a always a basis. hidden intent with this kind of data gathering, but you have to sell it as a fun experience to, to make people okay with it. You know? Well, Matt's Matt, you're a hundred percent spot on dude. Uh, as ever the, the idea. So, so long as these are private entities for profit entities, the ultimate goal will be to build a predictive model, a series of predictive models that enables you to address the concept of time and moments that have not yet occurred uh, with a, an unprecedented degree of sophistication. I've alluded earlier to like old contacts at DARPA who are um, technically going to be like government academic industry folks. Uh, they're much further along with this stuff than you think. You might be surprised, folks. You might be surprised to know that sometimes experiments like that are not turned off or aborted because they don't work. They're aborted because at certain points, people involved have had that. I'm cursing a lot in today's episode, but they've had that oh shit moment. What are we letting out into the world? And further think of this. So the idea of something like the metaverse, branding aside, the idea of the thing is already on the way. And we know not everybody agreed with us with our characterization of the possible problems with the metaverse. And that's fine. Um, but we were we were raising some of these red flags because we currently live in a time where people still can raise those red flags and the ability to edit history, the ability to dictate the future. Yes, it's classic Orwellian dude called it a while back, but he's not the only one calling it. And this is not just um, a bunch of fun. What if -ery. not anymore? It, it, it can happen. And to me, you know, the, the thought experiment now is like, what happens? Let's say, this current house of cards collapses. Ecological disaster means that humans are no longer around. Uh, you have for a couple of centuries, maybe you have something like a really good safe satellite or you have like a Hoover Dam, you know, providing power to something. <clears throat> and then Earth doesn't need people. That's pretty clear. So, so after the age of the Anthropocene, some other thing, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, some other sentient thing either arrives on this planet or evolves on this planet. And they can you imagine what a head trip it will be for those folks to find uh, 
a uh, a copy of human civilization like they can go and talk to you know very heavily documented like celebrities and politicians of note they won't know what celebrity is they won't know what politics are humans are going to be confusing it would be as if we could travel back and like kick it with a velociraptor really grill that velociraptor you know about his preferences and what kind of toothpaste he likes to use right right like that that's amazing Ben, I want to make this, uh, I want it to be a movie or, Dan, if you're listening, an episode, uh, a, a future species evolves on planet Earth and they discover, they f- come upon this AI replica. It's the only AI replica that exists, the only one that was ever fully manufactured, and it's of Kanye 2022. Uh, and it's just, <laughs> that's the only human they ever experienced. It's just Kanye 2022. Well, there, there's a concept in marketing specifically internet marketing called a lookalike audience and it's where Mm -hmm. you create essentially like using you know the clicks and likes and what what have you of of an actual engaged audience and like create almost a copy of it so you can reach new people that have the same exact interests and this is just a long tail version of that you know what I mean? Like the most, and I might be misrepresenting this concept a little bit. Any marketers out there, let me know. But I think I kind of get it. And, and, and this is why, to your point, Matt, this would be brilliant to be able to do this. And the only reason that they put any resources into doing something like this is because it creates this long tail kind of ability to create historical like lookalike audiences, you know, uh, the way people's tastes and things have evolved over time. And that's the only reason to do it for real monetarily and then they sell it as a fun time machine and this is i mean this is a great we we're killing it with like thematic through lines here uh on today's today's segment because uh we're talking about the importance of history and we're we're gonna see even even more of that as it evolves but yeah i'm super into the idea you know what i mean all civilization becomes is a time capsule (laughs) where (laughs) <laughs> like, uh, I love the idea. I'm tickled. Chip, this is a great letter. Uh, and Noel, your exploration here is spot on, man. I'm grateful for this one. <laughs> 